Now, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the chromosomal theory of inheritance. We had talked about Mendelian aspects of inheritance in which we were uh, discussing the laws which were given and proposed by Mendel and what explanations he had for those uh, propositions that he gave. And I would ask you to revise what those Mendelian laws were. There were three main Mendelian laws that we had studied. One was law of dominance, other was law of segregation and the third one was law of independent assortment. Now, as the cytological studied, uh, studies field grew and uh, with the advent of microscopy in the living cell study, we were coming slowly and steadily to the microscopic level and with development of uh, studies about the inheritance factors, it was slowly reaching the molecular level. Okay, The studies were reaching the molecular level. In 1879, William Fleming was the first person who saw the chromosomes in salamander cells. What is salamander? Salamander is an amphibian. So, he saw the chromosomes over there. The previous lesson that we had, we had discussed about what a chromosome is. Even in the uh, cell division chapter of your studies in the previous class, we had discussed what chromosome is all about. Now, in 1902, two cytologists, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary, individually studied the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis. Okay. These were the two scientists who had studied about the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis. Now, when they studied the chromosomes during meiosis, it was observed that whatever Mendel had proposed, there was a parallel between that uh, what Mendel proposed and what these two people proposed and uh, they proposed regarding the chromosomes. So, they united whatever factors they could unite and gave us the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Now, what was proposed by Mendel? Mendel had two uh, vital terms in his uh, theory. One was factors and yeah, unit factors. Okay. Now, this term factors was later on replaced by genes and this term was given by Johnson. You have to remember this. Now, these factors were located on the chromosome. This is what chromosomal theory means actually. These factors, they had alleles for them. A gene is having its alleles. Now, these alleles are present on homologous pair of chromosomes as observed by these two people in the meiotic division, there was a homologous pair of chromosomes. If we are considering the human cell, there would be 23 homologous uh, paired chromosomes and each pair would have the alleles for a given gene. This is what Mendel had proposed that the, for a character, for a phenotypic expression and that was termed as character, there are alleles which are present for a given factor. This is what Mendel proposed. If you cannot recall, I am just repeating it. That Mendel proposed that whatever the phenotypic character is, supposedly we are talking about the height, it would be governed by a factor inside the cell. That factor would have its two distinguished forms known as alleles. And this is what is being proposed in the chromosomal theory of inheritance that during meiosis, we have a homologous pair of chromosomes, okay, which are present. On those homologous pair of chromosomes, we have a gene located on it and that gene has alleles which occupy each of the chromosomes. Now, this is what is chromosomal theory of inheritance. Now, we are going to see the parallel between the chromosomal theory of inheritance and what Mendel proposed in its three laws. First thing, I would ask you again to recall your understanding of cell division. The first point was that there is law of dominance. This had no stand in chromosomal theory of inheritance. Law of dominance has nothing to do with chromosomal theory of inheritance. We are seeing the basis of the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So, the law of dominance is not there. Second is law of segregation. 
Now you very well know that because meiosis is being studied, because we are going to target the germ cells, in the germ cells the, uh, the composition of the chromosome number has to get reduced to half. So the genes and their alleles would get segregated and same happens when we see chromosome. We see in, in the homologous pair of chromosomes, the homologous pair gets separated. One daughter cell is getting one of the pair and the other one is getting other of the pair. So supposedly the allele is located over here the allele is getting segregated that means law of segregation apart from this we also see that there is law of independent assortment now you have to remember what law of independent assortment meant even in the case of homologous pair of chromosomes here also the pair of alleles pair of alleles please remember not just single allele the pair of alleles for supposedly we are taking two factors into account or rather I would say we are taking into account two genes they would segregate independently it will not have any effect how the other chromosome is segregating all right the segregation will be totally independent of the other chromosome and this was exactly what these two people observed they observed it that when meiosis takes place first of all there is segregation of chromosomes all right secondly they observe of homologous pairs individual uh, member segregated and that segregation was independent okay in terms of the factor it does not depend on the other pair how it is segregating it is not dependent actually in any ways so we have the law of independent assortment and we have the law of segregation now how to propose that these genes they are located on the chromosome the only point that you have to keep in mind if you can't remember anything is that the genes or the Mendelian factors both can be used interchangeably rather if you use genes that would be a better version the genes are located on the chromosome how to propose that you know there are certain characters which are regulated by factors and their alleles and as you uh, have studied in the case of Mendelian um, discoveries he had seven characters that he took into consideration seven characters different several seven phenotypic characters which had seven factors behind it and which had 14 alleles for that so uh, that means there should be seven chromosomes but it does not have seven chromosomes and uh, otherwise also you can take your own example if you have uh, consider if you have to consider your own characters there will be so many characters which would be exhibited by your personality each character is governed by each individual gene so the genes are way more in number as compared to the chromosomes the number of chromosomes found in the cell so certainly if the genes are following whatever the chromosomes are doing and they are much more in number that means the chromosome would be the site where the gene would be located so chromosome is the site where that particular arrangement of DNA is present and it may house many genes which give many characteristics expressions so this was what chromosomal theory of inheritance was all about this came into being from the various studies firstly this person gave us that uh, there are uh, certain colored bodies uh, certain parts of the cell which can take up the color and called it chromosomes later on there was a study by Walter Sutton Theodore Bovary and rest of the Alfred Strutevant they studied and they realized that if you have to find the core of inheritance you have to reach the molecular level once you reach the molecular level you just find a parallel between Mendelian factors and the chromosomes which are segregating at meiotic level so you can make it out that those genes are located nowhere else but on the chromosomes and hence the chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed and from here on now we are going to consider those inheritance pattern with respect to location on chromosome now why I have talked about this and why I have said that here on from now we are going to consider it because the next topic that we study it has a great deal to do with the location of the gene on the chromosome and that particular topic is known as linkage for knowing what linkage is you need to watch the next lessons.